So yes, the large intestine, what are the functions? What happens over here? Digestion happens? Let's see, how many of you can answer this? Digestion happens? What is the major function rather? Forget about digestion. What is the major function of large intestine? Tell me. Major function of large intestine. Okay, first let's introduce ourselves to the, what is, what is this large intestine? Named because, now you know. Why large? Because larger in not length but diameter. It is about 1.5 meters long, not so long. It's lesser than the small intestine. But if you talk about diameter, it's larger than the small intestine. Fine? Okay. So hence the name large intestine. Let's talk about the parts of the large intestine. Divide into three major parts. Cecum. Please note on the spelling of this. Colon and the rectum. Cecum, colon and the rectum. First, we will study about the cecum. Yes, easy. A lot of terms, right? It's okay. If you want to be doctors, we have to somehow deal with this. Keep noting, nothing will be difficult. Trust me. So first, let's talk large intestine. Now we are talking about, first we are talking about the cecum. It's a pouch-like structure. Very important point. It's a host to many microscopic organisms here. It is a host to many symbiotic microscopic organisms. Symbiotic, you know symbiosis, right? Symbiotic, basically the term symbiotic organism, symbiotic relationship, we studied about it. Example, can you give an example which we studied in biological classification chapter? Symbiotic association, quick example, come on. Lichens? Yes, very good. Okay, helium opens into the cecum. So, from small intestine, the last part, ileum, it opens into the cecum, which is a part of what? The large intestine. Hey, do you see this structure? Appendix. I'm sure most of you have heard about this. Today, we'll know about this. What is actually an appendix? Is it necessary? Have you heard about the word uh, vestigial organ? We'll study about all these today itself. Okay. Got it? Fine. So we're talking about the parts of the large intestine, the cecum. It has an outgrowth called as vermiform appendix. Appendix is fine. But why this term vermiform? Any clues about this? There's a story behind it. I'll share it. I'll share it. Wait. Now, you know, I'll talk about this vestigial organ. You know, vestigial organ. Why vestigial? Any one of you, can you tell me what do I mean by vestigial organ? I'm sure you've heard about this. Just try to guess it. What is a vestigial organ? Tell me. Well, so this appendix, it arises from the part of the large intestine, which is the cecum. What I see, it's no, you know, it's like a worm. It's like a worm, correct? Vestigial organs, yes. These are the organs whose functions, whose definite functions are not known to us. So what we believe is these are the organs which have no apparent function or rather I would say we have not been able to exactly point out what is the function of this appendix or these vestigial organs and these are considered to be residual, residual parts from the past ancestors. So we believe that these ancestors, our ancestors might have a properly developed organ along with this this uh, appendix okay which had some function but eventually with evolution this became obsolete now it's not required so it is now a vestigial organ the appendix we don't have uh, we have not found out a proper function to this even we can operate it out nothing happens to our body okay we can stay healthy we are we're fine even if we have a operation okay great no known function as of now. Fine? Great. Now let's move on. Well developed in herbivores. If you talk about this cecum, okay, it's quite well developed in herbivores. Now a homework, another homework for you. Try to find out what is the reason behind this. You'll find out a reason. Okay. Why this is developed more, more in herbivores. Find it out. It's your homework. 
Well, inflammation of the appendix is called appendictus. Okay. Sorry. It's known as the appendicitis. Okay. Got it. So inflammation of at times, I, I was telling you right, that at times this appendix have to be cut off or operated out. Fine. Nothing happens. And this condition, you know, this condition is known as appendicitis. Appendicitis. Got it? Well, let me share a did you know fact. Worm I was talking about. Right? Why the name vermiform appendix? Now, uh, early Egyptians, when they used to prepare the dead bodies for their funeral rites, they observed that this appendix that we are talking about, you know, it seems like a worm. And hence, from there on, they have been start. They, they started calling it vermiform appendix. Vermiform. That is, it means worm-like. It's a Latin word, which means worm-like. So, and we have been continuing yet as of now, vermiform appendix, worm-like structure. Fine, great. Let's move on. So the next part, it's a colon. Let's see what is this. Yes, fine. The colon, you know, it's a quite a large part and it is divided into other four parts. Let's see. Ascending colon. See here. Do you see the transverse colon? This part. Do you see the descending colon? This part. And do you see sigmoid because of this shape? Okay. Sigmoid colon. Note these four parts of the colon. Ascending, then transverse, then descending, then sigmoid because of the shape. Fine. All of you done. Next, we'll talk about rectum. All of you noted. Wait, I'll just wait for some time. Noted? I move on to the next part. That is the rectum. Let's see what is this. Rectum. Last part of the digestive tract. It ends in the anal canal, which ends in the anus. This is the last part of the digestive tract tract if you are talking about. So this is the rectum and it ends where? The anus. Correct? Got it all of you? So the descending part like after the sigmoid then the sigmoid this is the descending part transverse ascending then it opens into where? What what? The rectum which ultimately ends where? The anus. Got it? Well talking about the parts of the intestine the rectum Anus, now see, sphincter muscles, I told you, there are many sphincter muscles, see, they have two sphincters, internal anal sphincter, it's involuntary, that means, involuntary, it's not under your control, whereas there's another one, which is known as external, external anal sphincter, which is voluntary, that means, it's under your control, got it, voluntary, involuntary, two sphincter muscles, Please note this down. Internal anal sphincter, right in brackets, they are involuntary. You cannot control them. It's like automated. And external anal sphincter, it's under your control. It's voluntary. Okay. They control the movement of the ball. Great. Look, I have labeled the structures. This is rectum. Internal anal sphincter. Do you see the external anal sphincter? Okay. Correct. The anal canal. Fine. This is the canal through which the waste or I would say undigested products will be thrown out of the body. Correct? Fine. Let's move on. Very good. Well, what are the functions of the large intestine? I had asked you. Now it's time to disclose the answer. Absorption of water. Absorption of water. What is the major function of large intestine? You would not call it digestion, but what? It's absorption. Absorption of water and electrolytes. Okay. Colon. In fact, if I talk about colon, it is a region where a lots of absorption of these water, the water molecules and electrolytes happen. Now, also, if you talk about the later part of the large intestine, it's responsible for elimination of solid waste. We do call it solid waste, but actually, you know, uh, I'm sure you know. You know about it, right? It's not solid, solid. It's not solid. Rather, you know, these are undigested products as that's the reason the texture is different. It's not hard, solid, tough type. Right? The waste material. Because the parts which are not digested, 
okay, not fully digested, they will be thrown out of the body. Got it? So, you understood why the fecal matter is not, not completely solid? Fine, they are the undigested products. Well, let's move on. You know, here, there are some symbiotic bacteria. They make moderate quantities of vitamin K, vitamin B complex. Wow, very nice. So, some symbiotic bacteria, they are present here in this large intestine and they make moderate amount, moderate amounts of vitamin K and vitamin B complex. So, not all bacteria are harmful for us. Fine. 